Hey guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to play Nothing Compares to You. Chris Cornell's version is absolutely amazing. So there's some really cool guitar parts. In the video, I'll teach you all the rhythm and I'll teach you all the guitar solos as well. Now for the basics, you'll just need your guitar and standard tuning and you won't need a capo. Now if you wanna master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you really wanna improve on your guitar, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. All right, let's jump into the lesson. All right, so let's start with the rhythm guitar. And for the verse slash intro, we have just one line of chords, really simple. We're gonna start with the C and then a G slash B, so it's the same as a G, except we're not gonna hit the top sixth string. Just leave that muted. Then we have an A minor. Now those first three chords are strummed with a strumming pattern that goes like this. Down, 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 up, up, down, up, down, up. So the first three chords. And then our final two chords are a C and a G. Now the C and the G are going to be both within one strumming pattern and that strumming pattern will go down, 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 up. Now there's a couple of things we need to do here. Now on the second down strum, we actually need to go to a C sus four. So from the C, you just take your pinky finger and put it on the third fret of the fourth string. And then on the next down strum, we're lifting that. So on that highlighted down strum, we're going to go to a C sus4 there. And then on the next highlighted strum, that's where we change to the G chords. So the final strumming pattern. And in total, the verse slash intro sounds like this. Next we move on to the pre-chorus, which is almost identical. Now instead of doing the C to the G at the end, we're replacing it with just an E chord and strummed for a full strumming pattern. So the pre-chorus is really easy and sounds like this. Next we get to chorus number one. Now in chorus number one, it's really simple. We go to a B flat. Now the B flat major chord looks like this. So index finger on the first fret of the fifth string and then all the other fingers go on the third fret. Now if that's too hard, you can play just the B flat five power chord as well. So we have that chord and then we have an F and then back to the B flat and to the F. Now there's no strumming pattern here, we're just strumming each chord and holding it out. Now each chord's held for two beats, so it's one, two, and three, and four, one, and two, and three, and four, and... And then we end with a G. One, two, and three, and four, and... So that last G is held out for a full bar. And that's it for the first chorus, so really simple. Next we move on to the second verse. Now the second verse we've already sort of learnt midway throughout the second verse though, there is a variation to the chord progression. Now it's basically the same as the verse except we're cutting out the C to the G and we're just going to be playing an F for a full strumming pattern. So the verse variation sounds like this. Next we get to chorus number two. Now it's similar to chorus number one, we're changing the chords a little bit though. Instead of going B flat to F twice, we're going B flat, F, A minor seven, G, and then G again, and holding it out for that full bar. So the chorus number two, one, two, three, four, and 
Then we get to the bridge, and there's three lines of chords here. The first line of chords is the same as our verse, so we've already learnt that. The second line of chords is the same as our pre-chorus, so we've already learnt that. Now the third line of chords is a bit like the chorus, so we have B flat, F, then A minor, then G, and then we go to an E minor, and hold that out for a full bar, and then we go back to our G and hold that out for another bar. So the bridge slash solo is quite simple. It's just comprised of the verse, pre-chorus, and that third line of chords. So I'll just play the third line of chords so you can hear it. The last rhythm part is the final chorus. So it's very similar to chorus number two. We're gonna repeat those first two lines through twice. So B flat, F, A minor seven, G, and the G. So we're gonna repeat those through twice. And then for our third line of chords, we have E minor for a full strumming pattern. And then we just end the song with the G. So final chorus. And those are all the rhythm parts for this song. Okay, let's learn all the lead parts. So we're going to start with the intro solo. Now we're going to start on the third fret of the fifth string. We're going to hit that three times on beat. So one, two, three. For this next lick, we'll go fifth fret, slide up to the seventh. Fifth fret of the fourth string, seventh. And then we'll go fifth fret of the third and hammer on to the seventh. After the hammer on, we'll go back to the fifth fret of the third string twice. So the lick in total. Then for our next lick, we'll go sixth fret of the second string, fifth, seventh of the third, fifth of the third, and then we're going to do a double stop on the fifth fret of the fourth and third strings. So bar them with your index finger, strike both strings, and hammer on to the seventh fret with your ring finger onto the fourth string. And then quickly go to the fifth fret and then seventh fret of the fifth string. Like that. And that lick in total. And then for our next lick, we're going to start by sliding quickly from the seventh to the fifth fret. So hit that and slide down. Down to the third fret hit the 5th fret and slide back up to the 7th. So, and a bit slower. And then we're going to go down to the 5th fret, or the 5th string, 3rd fret, and then 2nd fret of the 4th string, hit it and hammer on to the 3rd fret. Back to the 2nd, and then we end on the open D. So the final bar. And in total for the intro solo. Let's get to the solo of the song, and the majority of this solo is played around the pentatonic scale. So the A minor pentatonic, or the C major pentatonic, if you want to look at it that way. And we have those extra notes extending off the main pentatonic scale shape. 
So that one is a big one. And that one as well, that box there. And this box here. All right, so to start this solo, we're gonna slide from the fifth fret of the fourth string up to the seventh. And then go fifth fret of the third, seventh fret, pluck that again and slide up to the ninth. And we're gonna hit that ninth fret again. So in total. Then for our next lick, we'll slide our ring finger down to the seventh, hit that, down to the fifth fret twice, pluck it again and hammer on back to the seventh. And then we'll do another double stop where you'll hit the fourth and third strings together with your index finger bar like this and hammer on to the seventh with your ring finger. After that hammer on, you'll pluck that seventh fret of the fourth string and slide it down quickly to the fifth fret. So that second run. For our next lick, we'll go up to the eighth fret of the first string. You're gonna pluck that, then 10th, and then you're going to pre-bend it. So you're gonna have it bent before you even pluck it. You then pluck it and release it down. So. And then we pull off to the eighth fret, so. Then 10th fret of the second. And then we'll get into this shape, so index and middle finger on the seventh and eighth frets of the third string. Do a double stop, so pluck both of them and hammer on with your ring finger to the ninth of the third string. So. Then you'll pluck that ninth fret and quickly slide it down to seventh. And then fifth fret, and then seventh fret of the fourth string. Back up to the fifth fret of the second string. And so far for this run. And then the final run we're going to work with is just triplets. So we have six notes here. We go seven, five, seven, five, seven, five for the third, fourth, and fifth strings. After that descending run, we're going to go down to the third fret of the fifth string, and that will start our next bar. So in total for that bar. So for the next bar, we start in that third fret of the fifth string. We hold that out for a tiny bit, and then we're going to start our next run. So slide from fifth to seventh, and then next string, fifth fret, seventh fret, and then next string, fifth fret, seventh, but then slide up to ninth. Then 10th, 9th, 7th, 5th, and then 7th, but slide it quickly up to the 9th. 7th, 5th, 7th on the 4th string, and then we end on the 5th fret of the 3rd string. So that whole lick in total. For our next lick, we're going to go eighth fret of the first string. We're gonna pluck that three times. Then fifth fret twice, and then eighth fret of the second string, so. For our next lick, we go fifth fret of the second string, and then we're gonna quickly go seventh, fifth of the third, seventh, fifth of the fourth string, and then seventh fret of the fifth string slide down quickly. Third fret of the fifth string, go back to fifth fret of the fifth string and slide back up. So. It's a bit of a descending run there. Then for our next lick, we ascend back up that pentatonic scale. And then we're going to hit that seventh fret and slide up to the ninth and pluck it twice in that section. Then we're gonna go ninth, seventh, fifth, and then seventh, but slide up to ninth. Seventh, fifth. So effectively six plucks there. 
And then this is where things change a little bit uh, in terms of the scale formations that you're playing. We're no longer going in that A minor pentatonic sort of shape. We're going to hit the sixth fret of the fourth string. And this is going to coincide with the E chord. So that sixth fret. And then we're gonna play a bit of an arpeggio scale pattern here. So it's an E major arpeggio. So seventh fret of the fifth string, play that with your pinky. Sixth fret with your ring finger on the next string. Fourth fret with your index finger on the next string. Then fifth fret on the second string with your middle finger. And then we'll go back down and then we'll end on that bass note twice. So that's it for the E bar, which goes. Then for our next bar, we're going to the first fret of the fifth string, and this coincides with the B flat chord. And for the next run, this is quite quick, a little bit tricky, but it's a lot of fun to play when you can get it. So third fret to fifth, and then bar your index finger across the third fret of the fourth and third string. And then we're gonna go fifth, fourth, third, and second strings. Fairly quickly, it's a bit of a triplet there. Then you go third fret of the fourth string, fifth fret of the third string, second fret, third fret of the fourth, second, open, and then third fret of the fifth string in the bar in total. That's it for the third line of tab. For the fourth line of tab, we go to an A minor shape. So it starts to get pretty easy here. So we hit the bass note, then the fourth string, second, third, fourth. So I'll go. And then we go to the G note on the sixth string, hold that out, and then G, F sharp. So that bar in total. After that descending note, we're gonna to go to an E minor shape. I'm gonna hit the open sixth string, hold that out, and go fourth string, second and third together. So. And the next one goes like this. So fourth string, then with your middle finger, you want to put it down on the second fret of the third string. Pluck that twice, lift your ring finger, hit the open third string, go to fourth string, lift your middle finger, hit the open fourth string. Then we go to our next string down, fifth string, and lift that and hit it open twice. So that whole lick. And then we're going to finally end by putting your ring finger on the third fret of the sixth string, outlining a G chord shape. And then open fourth, open third, open fourth, and end with that second string. So, so the final line of tab. So the solo in total. One, two. And that's 
it for the solo. A lot of fun to play, and as I mentioned, it just uses a whole lot of the A minor pentatonic scale or C major pentatonic scale. And then when the chords change, you can clearly see that the solo works around those chords and the arpeggios of those chords. And those are all the parts for Nothing Compares to You by Chris Cornell. So now I'll be doing a full playthrough of the song. I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. A big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals to this playthrough. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to head over to guitarsreadyhero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to improve on your guitar, then sign up to Guitars Ready Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. It'd mean the world if you could hit that like button, hit subscribe, click the little notification bell as well, so that you don't miss out on my updates. Please leave your thoughts, comments, questions, or requests down below, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitars Ready Hero. Cheers.